This is Kurt Heisinger, accounting professor at Sierra College and author of Managerial Accounting. This video describes how to use short-term liquidity ratios to evaluate really the ability of companies to be able to meet their short-term obligations. Suppliers and of course other short-term lenders, maybe banks, uh, want to evaluate whether companies actually can meet their short-term obligations, particularly if suppliers are going to continue to supply goods to these companies on credit. So we've got several, four in fact, uh, to be exact, uh, short-term liquidity ratios that we will be taking a look at. And those are all shown right here, the current ratio, the quick ratio, the receivables turnover ratio, and inventory turnover ratio. As with all of the videos that I've posted that show how to perform ratio analysis, uh, we're going to be using Coca-Cola and uh, using them as an example. And that's what you see right here. You see Coca-Cola's balance sheet for two years, for December 31, uh, for 2014, and for 2013. So you can see that right here. There's 2014 and there's 2013. So we're going to be looking at Coca-Cola and, and the most current year in calculating the four ratios that you saw in the previous slide. Here, we're going to learn how to calculate the current ratio. And the current ratio is, uh, is calculated by taking current assets in the numerator and dividing that by current liabilities. So what we're really looking at is, uh, what do we have in the way of current assets? Remember, those are the assets that are liquidated or used up within a year of the balance sheet date. What do we have in the way of current assets to cover our current liabilities? And remember, those are the, the debts that we have to pay off within a year of the balance sheet date. So what do we have in the way of current assets to cover our current liabilities? So the current assets for Coca-Cola are shown right here. And we're focusing, again, on... 2014. So all of our current assets are shown in this box. So that those are the current assets and in fact you're going to see all of that up here. Right? Those are the numbers right up above in the numerator. So we add all that up and then we are going to divide that by the current liabilities and those are shown right here on the balance sheet for Coca-Cola. So that's this information and that's shown up here as well in the denominator. So we're going to take our current assets and divide by current liabilities and you'll notice that the, the total current assets, uh, these are in millions, is $32,986,000,000 for Coca-Cola at the end of the year. And the total liabilities, I'm sorry, current liabilities, total $32,374,000,000. So again, current assets divided by current liabilities. And that gives us a ratio of 1.02 to 1. And that's how it's typically stated, 1.02 to 1. And what that tells us is that for every dollar in current liabilities, Coca-Cola has about a dollar two cents in current assets. So they have enough in the way of current assets, barely, to cover their current liabilities. The next ratio that we're going to look at is the what's called the quick ratio. And sometimes this is called the acid test ratio. But we'll call it the quick ratio here. Same thing. Um, and you'll see in the numerator for the quick ratio is cash plus marketable securities uh, meaning any kind of short-term investments the company might have, plus short-term receivables, often called accounts receivable. And we then divide that by the same denominator you saw with the current ratio on the previous slide. But here, this is what I call a more stringent test on the company's ability to pay off current debt, in that uh, we only include in the numerator cash, marketable securities, and short-term receivables. We exclude all the rest of the current assets. And I should note here that some companies and some analysts would argue with this uh, equation, and, and, and it is debatable what's included in the numerator. Some might say, well, we should include inventory because it's a company that turns inventory very quickly, for example, a grocery store. Uh, but we're not going to do that here. We're going to define our uh, numerator, our quick assets, as cash, marketable securities, and short-term receivables. And for Coca-Cola, those items are shown right here. And I always tell my students that anything below accounts receivable, since that's our cutoff, the short-term receivables, anything below accounts receivable is less liquid by definition if it appears below it on the balance sheet and therefore should not be included in the numerator. And anything above accounts receivable should be included because it's more liquid than accounts receivable uh, because the, the balance sheet is not always clear on, on what each of these items represents. So if you see something above accounts receivable but we're not clear on what it is, maybe it's not called marketable securities or it's not called cash and cash equivalents, we still include it in the numerator. And then as I mentioned on the previous slide, 
the denominator will simply be our current liabilities. So the numerator, let me uh, blow this up just a little bit. The numerator is going to include then this information right here, and you'll see that in the formula up above, and the denominator would be all current liabilities, this information right here. So just to, to draw you a bit of a road map here, this information goes over here, right? That's all of this. And this information goes right here. Current liabilities goes in the denominator. And therefore, we get $26,141,000,000 in quick assets divided by $32,374,000,000 in current liabilities. And that gives us a quick ratio of 0.81 to 1, meaning for every dollar that Coca-Cola has in current liabilities, they have 81 cents in quick assets which are assets that are going to be liquidated fairly quickly, uh, well within a year, uh, probably more like within a few months of the balance sheet date. The next short-term liquidity ratio that we'll take a look at is the receivables turnover ratio. So what we're trying to get at here is how quickly is the company able to turn over its accounts receivable? In other words, how quickly is the company able to collect? on its accounts receivable. And this will get to how many times a year the company will collect on its accounts receivable. And the, the calculation here is uh, credit sales divided by average accounts receivable, meaning we'll take the beginning of the year plus the end of the year divided by two for accounts receivable in the denominator. The uh, credit sales piece of this is a little bit tricky because we don't always have access to the company's credit sales. The assumption we're using here for Coca-Cola is that all sales are on credit. Uh, however, that's not always a valid assumption, and so we would need to go find the credit sales. If we're within the company, we can get that information, but on the outside, companies do not necessarily disclose that. So that's a little bit tricky, but we're going to assume here that all sales are on credit, and therefore, we'll go over to, or down to, I should say, the income statement, and we're going to grab our net sales, assuming that they are all credit sales, and put that in the numerator. And then we're going to figure out on from the balance sheet our average accounts receivable by simply taking the end of the prior year, which is also the beginning of the current year, and adding that to the end of the current year and dividing by 2. And that's what you see up here. So that is how we figure out average uh, accounts receivable. And then uh, we'll take credit sales divided by average accounts receivable, and that tells us that uh, Coca-Cola collects their accounts receivable 9.85 times per year. If we want to take this one step further, we can actually figure out how many days it takes on average for Coca-Cola to collect on their accounts receivable. Just simply take 365 days divided by our 3.85 here, and that will tell us how many days it takes for Coca-Cola to collect on their accounts receivable. The last short-term liquidity ratio that we're going to look at in this video is the inventory turnover ratio. So what we're trying to get at here is how quickly is Coca-Cola able to turn their inventory over, to sell their inventory. And for most companies, they want to sell their inventory as quickly as possible without running out of inventory. Uh, so to get this uh, ratio, we're going to take cost of goods sold in the numerator, that comes right from the income statement, and divide it by average inventory. And that comes from the balance sheet. So on the income statement, you'll see here our cost of goods sold is $17,889,000 million dollars, that's in the numerator, and going over to the balance sheet, you'll see that we have a merchandise inventory line item right here, and we're going to just simply take that information to figure out, um, add those two together, end of 2013 and the end of 2014, add those two together and divide by two to figure out the average inventory balance. What we end up with then is $17,889,000,000 in cost of goods sold divided by average inventory of $3,188,000,000 and some change. And that gets us uh, an answer, a result of 5.61 times per year. So what that tells us is Coca-Cola turns their inventory over 5.61 times per year. If we want to extend this just a little bit, we can actually figure out how many days it takes on average for Coca-Cola to sell their inventory. Simply take 365 days and divide it by 5.61. And that will tell us, on average, how many days it takes for Coca-Cola to sell their inventory.